Hey guys. Hey guys. We we're, are the. No, you go ahead. We're the Dorkery. <laughs> Ladies first, right? Mm -hmm. Normally I say that though. I know, I was just messing with you. No, you know, it's fine. You know what? We should always do role reversals, you know, because it, it works. You know. What do you go? I don't know where you're going. <laughs> it's Comic Call Day. Comic Call Day. Comic Call Day. So. Comic Call Day. Yeah, they've been kind of second. Because we up. Comic Call Day. Comic Call Day. We haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do two parts. We're going to do this one. This is like everything except for vintage Star Wars. Like, I have so many vintage Star Wars books that we'll do those in a separate haul. How's that sound? <laughs> So this will be the everything else that's not a vintage Star Wars book. Uh, so, you know, as you can see over there, we're kind of, you know, we like uh, the old vintage Marvel Star Wars. So, uh, so let's start off with something. Uh, I think I kind of showed you, uh, remember the Grogu magazine? Grogu? All right, you remember that? It was Star Wars. I remember. Inside. Okay. Peach Momoko. All right, so here is the very first appearance. This came out almost two years before Kanan number one. Yes. You remember what Kanan number one is, right? All yes. the Rebels' first appearance. <laughs> I showed you that comic a kajillion times. So two years before that comic came out, we got Star Wars Insider number 149. So this is actually the first published appearance of the Rebels. So Kanan, Sabine, Ezra. Really? Yeah. I feel like... It's... it's Kind of expensive, so I had to go with a little bit. It's got some issues with it condition-wise, uh, but if you want a minty one of these, you're talking like $100 plus. And I really? wasn't ready to spend that kind of money on that. So I said, you know what? I'll take one that's got a few little issues because I don't really think I'm going to grade it anyways. I just wanted to have it in my hands. Um, so it's got a couple issues, but I'm happy with it. There it is. There's two different variants. That's I liked that variant cover. Uh, with the Grievous there. I mean, Grievous looks more ominous than, like, you know, Grievous is well, a pretty ominous this guy. This is the first time that I've ever seen Grievous actually look like like an army commander. Yeah, like, like he's going to lead the, he's going he's gonna to end it all. Grievous is going to end the whole rebellion. That's what he looks like right there. He's like, come at me. Well, he's always very mouthy and, <laughs> and, and somewhat... It, and somewhat, his, his mouthiness always seems a little whiny. I okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Sure. Um, but he just seems very, like, professional here, which, like, army professional, which right. I don't always get from his character. Mm, I gotcha. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. So there it is. There's the uh, Star Wars Insider magazine. That's the second magazine I own, the first one being that Grogu. So I thought, hey, I'll go after that, too. Here's something I don't often do. I don't often buy books already slabbed unless I see an opportunity. He likes to slab his own book. I like to slab my own. Unless I see an opportunity to crack that slab, mm -hmm. you know, back it up, crack it, mm -hmm. and then resubmit it. So we have Spider-Man 300 right above that. That's a 9.4. Here's 301, which is just as challenging to get in a high grade as 300 is because of that black back. And it's an old case, Lady Dorkery. I mean, it's so old that you can actually pull it apart. Please stop. <laughs> Are you cracking this? Yeah, so I'm going to send this to our dear friend, Erod. 212! The 212. The, the, the 212. The 212. The Master Presser. And I don't know. Uh, it's weird because, I don't know. Let's see if we can get you uh, maybe. Um, yeah, right there. So right there. It almost looks like spine ticks, but I was kind of looking at that Lady Dork read. I was like, it almost looks like there was an extra staple in there at one time, and um, maybe someone I took it out. I agree. That is 100%. So, so I don't know. It, it's a weird one. Uh, so maybe that's what, I mean, the rest of the book is beautiful, uh, which is really weird because I don't know if you know this about Amazing Spider-Man 301. The paper quality on the front is so bad that you can actually see through it. And that's just what that comic was back then. So look Dear on the... Dear goodness, how does anybody read this? Y yeah, I know. That's that's old, old label. This was probably Slab seven, seven plus years ago. So you see how you can see the actual first page of the comic because yes. that paper is so thin? Yes. That's, that's actually normal. Uh, so I'm thinking, hey, if I could get a grade bump up to 9.6... And who knows? So even with that little thing, maybe they maybe they call that a, uh, a a manufacturing issue. That little punch on that staple, because I don't think someone took that out of there. 
Um, maybe I get a 9.8 because that's a really clean. And if that's a 9.8, we're talking about a ghost of a book. Like, you know. Isn't there normally a third staple? No. Like, are you, okay. No. I feel like this staple, but I feel like this staple is even in the wrong place. Yeah. Like this staple supposed to be higher. I don't know. Yeah, I can see that. Like something is off with the staples. Yeah. Um, but again, that's a manufacturing issue, my, so you wouldn't normally only, get hit with that. So my my last thing uh, discussing pressing it. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're gonna be able to see it, but if you look at it this way, there's an indent. There's a there's a little yep. bit of a. That's why I got it. Where they were sitting on top of each yep. other, and uh, that could be pressed out. Yep. So nine point six. I mean, some would say, well, you want it linear because your three hundred's at nine point four, but. Hey, eh. if I can even get a shot at a 9.8 and turn around and that's a $1,000 plus book. This is a really pretty book. I'll let it go. Um, it's very clean and I think it would look even better with a new label. Even the grading label is yeah. bleh. Yeah. Uh, and definitely with a slab that doesn't pull apart. And what was fun, I ended up buying that off of somebody's like, hey... I know you guys. You're on YouTube, so that's, that's a lot. That's of always fun. fun. Yeah. So, all right, Star Wars Legacy. So I've got number one at CGC right now, which is a big book. Uh, Lady Darker. One day I need to get you to read the Legacy. These are nine point eight candidates. I am not sending these into press because I couldn't find a single thing wrong with any of these. She's like, uh oh, now you're gonna make me hold them. Uh, so we got three, we got four. And we got five. So if these can come back 9.8, uh, we're talking like this one, for example, there's less than 10 of a 9.8 on the census. So Star Wars Legacy kind of opens up a whole different universe, Lady Dorkery. So these are all like first appearances of Star Wars characters you probably never heard of. They're not mainstream yet, but one day if they do become mainstream, uh, then it's something that's going to be pretty cool to have uh, all these slabs. So I, I just got zero. I showed you zero the other day. I do need number two, uh, and then I've got one at CGC, so I'd have zero through five if I were to get number two, and they're do all going to be slabs. Do you think this is something I could find at the used bookstore to read? Like a, uh, I don't know if there's like a, a trade paperback of that or not. I'm sure there is, but I would, I would suggest doing a trade paperback on that. Because those covers are very enticing. Yep. All right, Lady Dorkery, just in a couple of weeks, one week from Friday is the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So we have ourselves a first appearance of Winter Soldier. This too has already been pressed and is ready to go. I am sending that in to CGC. It's not perfect, uh, but it's one that uh, I want to go ahead and get slabbed now, because, you know, because when that show starts... It's just going to kind of go through the roof. So there's that one. We've got, you've seen it a thousand times. Let's do it one more time. Let's That's take another what shot. That's he said. That's, <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to go for Omega Red. See if we can get a high grade. That's got a little issue in the corner, but... Who knows? You know, I always go for that guy that's in a really good mood that day and he just misses those things. And, These are just, and I, this is just a good comic. Yep, yeah, I just love the art of that. Uh, here's a new one for us. We have the first print up there in a 9.8. This is the second printing, uh, which has Riri's face on the front. So, no, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we've got number Let's seven. That's uh, up there, so I it does see, not see. have her face on it. We've had uh, this one before, though. We, we've had number seven, oh, okay. not this one. Uh, so that one looks like to be a 9.8 ready to go. Uh, so I don't have to press that one. I don't have to press this one. New Agents of Atlas. This is kind of a young team. It's got the first Filipino hero in it, Lady wow, Dorker. Yeah. Fun. So people are excited about that. Uh, so that one looks like it's ready to go. I'll hand you one more after this, and then I'll take that stack away. Uh, Arana, I think her name is, uh, this one, Amazing Fantasy number one, this is one of the Spider-Verse, uh, characters. This looks like this is, a 9.8 as well. I don't really feel like I have to press that. They look super clean, and she's looking at it, double-checking my work there to see if I'm I... honestly just intrigued by all of these books. Yeah? Um... So those are just ones I feel like that if I can get in and I can get uh, without a press a 9.8, then I have scored big time on those. Yeah. If you know what I mean. So. You like to score. Yep. I do. Every day. Pew, pew. All right. So I've talked about it before. I'm not a big fan of this cover, but you know what? 
Rogues just keeps getting better. There's her first appearance again, Lady Dorkery. I, I upgraded. I think that you don't like covers that are broken up like that. Yep. And see, everybody's you don't like, like story oh, that's her. Board nope. covers. That's not her. Every that's time her. there's a storyboard She's cover, not on there. you don't like it but yeah, you're so saying, busy but you're saying you don't like it because she's not on the cover yeah what is my other this is so busy it's a is, busy cover so my other assessment is correct what's that you don't like storyboard covers probably so because it's so busy for me so but that's okay uh i my old one was it had boxing on the back of it which i don't know if i've talked to you about that before that's basically where the paper quality know what boxing okay, is okay so sorry <laughs> so sorry uh so this one's pretty high i'm sending that off to erod to press it um, I'm hoping to get in the nines on that. There was no way my one with Foxing was going to get in the nines. I think I paid like 75 bucks for that. And I sold my other one for like 60. So I upgraded like 15 bucks for, for a pretty clean copy. I have a randomness. I call that a good day. I have a randomness. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's okay to talk about this, but okay. we're going to talk about it. Okay? All right, let's do it. Okay. So comic book art for women. Okay. <laughs> comic book art for women. Is always a little bit overdone. Is this? Uh, oh, you mean their art? Their their parts of their bodies? Chesticles. Yes, they um, hang from my lady's chest. <laughs> <laughs> so when these translate to um, movie roles, okay, it's not always the same way. So, um, right? are you going to do Mystique? I think it's really cool. However, that when Mystique goes to a I movie knew you were role, going to her Mystique. When Mystique. Her chesticles are still very comic-y. Okay. Does that make sense? No, uh, sure. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence looked pretty good. Are you talking about Jennifer Lawrence or Rebecca Both. Ramon? Both. I'm just, I'm talking about the costuming. Okay. I'm just talking just about. just painted on. I just, I'm not being, you think I'm being sexual. I'm, I'm not being No, sexual. no, no, no. I, well, your face is though. <laughs> Can you fix your face? I'm honestly just being comic art commentating. I think it's cool that their costumes translate to movies still look very comic book-like. I gotcha. Which is what they're supposed to do, right? I mean, it's always cool to have a new upgrade. <laughs> Just forget it. Uh, uh, WandaVision. That's what I was referring to. Okay. Wanda... Oh, you, are we, no, no, go ahead. Wanda's outfit at the end of WandaVision. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like Insinuate, the, insinuated. I'm not talking about that anymore. <laughs> I'm talking about the difference. Turning I, red. Oh, God. Why did I even do this? For I'm, all the women out there. I'm No, I'm talking comic book art is all I'm talking. <laughs> I'm just talking about comic book art. I liked, I thought it was cool, the, the newer update to her outfit. It looked very oh, futury and not comic booky. I'm not saying it's never you. okay. I got you. I'm just saying it's cool to see something so that looks So what you're saying, like this right here, that would have never played Mystique, that would have never played on film. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying it looks the same on the movies, but that's not always true, and I think it's cool that it looks the same. Let's get to the next book. <laughs> Monica Rambo's first appearance. Uh, I think I showed this on when we were with MJ Comics. This is one of those books that, you know, everybody was going after uh, after that movie was over. I got this a little bit before uh, WandaVision came on. It's kind of wrinkly, so I'm sending that in to get pressed. That's just weird. What? Why is it shaped that way? Why is it wrinkly? <laughs> what? Why is she shaped that way? Yeah, this is definitely needs to be pressed. Yeah, because it's wavy. It's got a couple of little spine ticks right there, but other than that, super clean. Presenting the exciting origin of the all new, all Old different, school. all Read terrific Captain Marvel. Yep. Yep, yep, Little yep. Wasp in the background. That's cool. Yep. I like Wasp. Wasp isn't. I just got a Wasp Legends today. Wasp is not um, shown enough. Look. Aww. Twins. Aww. Just got her in the mail today. All right. So we have Clone Wars number one at uh, CGC. Right? Yeah. You think this is a Clone Wars number one right No. No? So, I don't even know what all is at CGC yeah, there's, anymore. There's a lot. So <laughs> Clone Wars 1 at CGC, it actually has been received status, praise God. It's been, you know, it's been sitting there for weeks of, you know, when it actually arrived and they just now marked it as receipt. But hey, that's okay. So what's better than Clone Wars number one? Nothing. <laughs> what's the second best thing? 
<laughs> Clone Wars number two. Uh, and I got this Lady Dorkery for like 24 mm, bucks. Jawline. Yep. So I, this is my second copy, but this one is uh, worthy to be pressed and Ahsoka. graded. Ahsoka. Let's see so, if I can do it. Let's see if I can do it. Go ahead. Go Hold ahead. it. Oh, I got one. I got one for you, Hold too. Hold it. The next Beach one you're going to love. Well, we're getting a prize. I know, but so. Oh, that's good. That's good. Maybe that's maybe that's our screenshot right there. <laughs> Why is she standing like that? I don't know. Look she's, at her. <laughs> she's, that's her thinking face. So there's her thinking face. What about her pissed off face? So Clone Wars number three. Look how pissed off she is right there. Yeah. I don't know so. how hard, how, no matter how hard she tries, Ahsoka's pissed off face still looks like uh, a teenage girl. Like, yeah. Yep. So I've got. You ruined my favorite. I've got pair a lot of, of these going. I'm kind of getting that one through 12. Two and three are going to Erod to get pressed and then get graded. Definitely both 9.8 candidates. Uh, speaking of 9.8, this is a 9.8 that keeps going out the moon. I paid 100 bucks for this and. If uh, if it comes back in nine point eight, we're talking seven hundred, seven fifty, ish dollars. That's seven fifty for you, right? Yeah. Like that's how many of these you bought? <laughs> no. I wish I had seven hundred and fifty of these. I would flood the market. I, it would be it would be flooded. Uh, speaking of uh, flood, it. just flood it. How many of these have you seen, Lady Dorkery? That's okay. I'm gonna keep getting them. You know what they say? If you've seen one, you've seen, you've seen them all. Seen them all. <laughs> I'm gonna keep getting them. There's no color rub on the back of that. Just needs a little bit of a press. Uh, so maybe get that 9.8 in that. That's another book that's getting close to $500 on a 9.8. Uh, we have we have them at CGC right now. We just How many? Lots. We're like Nemesis Prime level. So, But here's one. You're going to like this, Lady Dorkery. I've been chasing this one for a while. This is the grand finale. You ready? Mm -hmm. This is it. Mm -hmm. This is this is all I'm going to show you today because mm -hmm. I feel like you can't do any better than this. I've been looking for this book for a long time because all I buy is the first print. And we got, you ready? You ready? I'm going to just kind of tease the crowd a little bit. You see, it's purple. It's purple. Fourth print. Oh, Darth wow. Vader 3. Oh. Fourth print. That's... The one that everybody wants, Lady That's Dorkery. That's pretty, and why, though? Uh, because there's not that many of them. Mm. So you got to think, once they get to the first printing, there's a lot of those. Second printing, Whoa. a little less. Third printing, a little I've less. I've never wanted a sleeve before. And, oh, uh, Afro sleeve. But I might now. Yeah. That's Excuse pretty cool. Miler. So uh, that one is definitely going to Erod. It had a couple issues on the back. Uh, I don't think this is a 9.8 candidate, but in the nines, uh, it's just one that, I mean, I paid... A good chunk of change for this because you cannot get this um, cheap. It's it's hard to get. Quit looking at me like that. I've been looking for this book forever. I even sent a picture to Erod and said, I finally found one. And he was so happy for me. He didn't send me any type of a face of like, what did you spend on that, Drew? You're supposed to be spending that money with me. <laughs> Erod would never see that. So he was happy for me. Thanks, Erod. So there you go. That's the finale, Darth Vader number three. So again, I got my little trifecta to constantly send to uh, CGC. <laughs> it's, it's Darth Vader number three, Kanan one, and Kanan six. I'll keep sending those all day long, Lady Dorker. If I get my hands on them cheap, they're going to keep going out the door. Get! Yeah! That's what I'm going to tell them. I say, get to CGC, get! Yeah! <laughs> what was your favorite book? What was your favorite book? That, that Grievous. The, oh, the magazine? Mm hmm Oh, interesting. All right, so there you go. Go get you a... Uh, uh, there's a real first appearance of Kane and Ezra and Sabine. So go get that, ladies and gentlemen. And in the meantime... Go dork go yourself! Dork yourself. <laughs> pew, pew! Pew, pew! Pew, pew, get close, get close.